For most of us as Catholics, as Christians in general, we know what sin is, we know that we shouldn't do it, but we do it anyway. Why? Uh, as St. Paul says, the good that I want to do, I don't do, and the evil that I don't want to do, I do. Why is that? Why is it that even though I know what I should do, I don't, I don't do it, and I know what I shouldn't do, and I do it anyway? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that we love listener feedback. So if you've got questions about today's episode, or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition, I-G-N-I-T-I-O-N, at sfcatholic.org. I'm joined in studio by my regular guest, co-host, Robin Bruggeman. Hey, Robin. Good morning to you, sir. How, how, well, and, it, well, depending on people are listening. Afternoon, but, good evening, yeah. good night. Just good like, everything like, to you. Good everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Robin. So we are um, we're recording this right before Lent, but this is a great. But when people are listening, this to me just um, a little bit into Lent. It's a. I think it's. I don't know if because you're the one who proposed the topic, mm-hmm. yep. and I didn't know if you were thinking of. No, I know you weren't actually thinking of Lent, were you? Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe. I was thinking of everything. You were thinking of everything. Good everything. <laughs> Good everything. So, so um, you had raised the topic. Uh, you used frankly, a, a, a big multisyllabic technical term mm-hmm. um, called concupiscence. Yep. And and you said, hey, can we talk about concupiscence? Have you talked about that before on Ignition? No, I haven't. So let's talk about it. So um, I'm, I'm going to kind of turn control over to you a little bit. Just a little. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> I can't give up, compl- as, I, as I say often, I'm a control enthusiast. So I give up, can't give up complete control, although I should. That fits in perfectly to our theme for today. I should give it more control, but I don't. <laughs> you can't let go of I can't that let go. control enthusiast. I, exactly. <laughs> so so um, you, wh- why do you want to talk about concupiscence? Well, okay, for starters, that's a word I've heard throughout my Catholic life, yep. and I'm not sure I've ever had a good lesson or um, received good knowledge on it, right. proper knowledge maybe. So it was always kind of a, what is that word? And it's kind of a hard word to even say, so it's it hard is. to ask yeah, if you look somebody. At it. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh. <laughs> I can't even pronounce the word to ask what it actually yes. means. Yes. Um, so I've heard it used in different Catholic um, talk and such sure but um when you figure out or kind of learn a little bit about what it is it's it's interesting and it, it's all of us deal with it yes we do yes we do so yeah yeah great so maybe we'll start off by um i'll just sort of give a uh my own explanation of it yeah. but then we'll get authoritative and look at the catechism mm-hmm. and we'll kind of go from there sound good yes okay so i'm keeping control actually as it okay you can have it <laughs> actually not a control enthusiast so it actually works well it works that we well. do this together <laughs> good balance complimentary um yeah. so concupiscence is is the tendency to sin that we all have as a result of original sin mm-hmm. so adam and eve fall from grace com- they commit uh, the original sin, mm-hmm. um, and and therefore, as a result of that, every one of their descendants, which is all of us, mm-hmm. have this 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 bentness, crookedness, mm-hmm. brokenness within our spirit, within our soul. So um, it's 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 again the the tendency to sin is what concupiscence is. So even though by virtue of our baptism, original sin is wiped away, some of the effects of original sin remain. Like like right. I mean the most the, the, the most obvious one, but I don't think we think about it very often. Death, physical death, is the result of original sin, and we all still die. Huh. So, so even though original sin is cleansed because we're we're filled with God's grace, mm-hmm. uh, so in us original sin is the absence of God's God's dwelling within us mm-hmm. in sanctifying grace. Um, 
and it's this brokenness within us. Um, so even though we are filled with God's grace, not all of the consequences or effects of original sin are cleansed or healed by the grace of baptism and the rest of the sacraments. Um, so physical death is the biggest one. Now concupiscence, even though I just said it's, it's not wiped away, the the life of the Christian is a battle against this another uh, another common uh, phrase co- common in theological circles to describe concupiscence. It's the tinder of sin. You think of tinder mm-hmm. like to start a fire or something. Yeah, yeah. It's what you put in there to get like that's what concupiscence. Is. It's the it's the mm. little thing that just with the littlest temptation sparks the fire yeah. of a sin. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. The, the 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 spiritual interior battle of the Christian among mother th- other among other things it includes our fight against our own brokenness mm-hmm. uh, against our own concupiscence against yeah. our own tinder of sin against mm-hmm. our own desire to sin does that make sense yes totally so before I look to the catechism I just is there anything from that 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 questions about that resonates with you that makes sense or that I should clarify. I think it makes sense. I think, um, to me, it makes me think, okay, so we all have this in us. Yep. So to like myself or anybody listening can be like, okay, like if you struggle with that, you know, like what we all do, we all have those temptations. It's like, okay, this is, we're all dealing with this. And yep. there's actually a word yep. even named to there it. Is, there is a word. It's a real thing. It's a real so, word. Yeah. yeah. Can you keep it? So I, I joke because um, my, my doctoral dissertation looked at uh, in large part. It wasn't just simply on the topic of concupiscence. It was on the topic of concupiscence in the context of the disagreements between Catholics and Lutherans about oh. the doctrine of justification. <laughs> and concupiscence is really near the heart of those that original disagreement between Luther and the church wow. in the 16th century. So I'm an expert in concupiscence, both yes. theologically but also experientially because I, like the rest of us, struggle with the desire yeah, to sin. I can't wait to learn more then. So let's look at what the catechism says. This is this is in the con- this is 405 in the catechism. So if people aren't familiar, don't have a ca- copy of the catechism, they can just Google catechism of the Catholic Church or, or any search engine. You can bing it if you want. <laughs> you can duck duck go it if you want. Um, but paragraph four if you if you do an internet search for catechism of the Catholic Church 405, uh, it's not the page number, it's the paragraph yep. number. Uh, and this is in the context of um, original sin, what the church formally officially teaches about original sin. Again, paragraph 405 says, although it is proper to each individual, original sin does not have the character of a personal fault in any of Adam's descendants. So I just want to go ahead and stop right there to explain that, if that's okay. Um, So Adam committed the original sin. Eve committed the original. Mm-hmm. I don't commit original sin. There's not a personal fault. It's uh, sin when it comes to original sin is when 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 we normally think of sin, we think of something something that we do or that mm-hmm. we fail to do, right? A yep. sin of commission or a sin of omission. With original sin, for Adam and Eve, it was a sin of commission. Mm-hmm. For the rest of us, it's not sin in that exact sense. The precise sense of sin is an act where I choose to do or not do something, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, so when it says original sin does not have the character of a person of fault in any of Adam's descendants, it's just making clear that what I just said, that I didn't commit original mm-hmm. sin. Mm-hmm. I'm, as we'll see, I'm born into it. I'm right. conceived we with it. it. We inherit it. Right. It is a deprivation of original holiness and justice. So it's a lack. Something that God created, uh, intended us to be. Um, so he gave us, he created us as human beings. And with Adam and Eve, he gave them the gift of holiness and just. Original holiness and original justness. They, mm-hmm. they were properly ordered. Mm-hmm. Things where they were, where they were supposed to be in them. Um, original ju- holiness and justice. Uh, original sin in you and me is lacking. It should be there because God wants it to be there, but it's not. So it's the deprivation. It's the lack Mm -hmm. of that, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, But human nature, the catechism goes on, human nature has not been totally corrupted. So we're lacking this original justice, original holiness and justice, but we're not complete, we're not completely corrupted. Right. It it is wounded, so human nature is wounded in the natural powers proper to it. 
subject to ignorance, suffering, and the dominion of death, and inclined to sin, an inclination to evil that is called concupiscence. Mm -hmm. Baptism, by imparting the life of Christ's grace, erases original sin and turns a man back toward God, but the consequences for nature, weakened and inclined to evil, persist in man and summon him to spiritual battle. So, uh, I love that end. Again, I, I, I sort of said this in my summary already, that the effects of original sin remain in us even after we're filled with God's grace by mm-hmm. baptism. But those effects remain, they persist in us, and they summon us to spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so any, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now from the catechism. Thoughts on any of, th- of what it says there? Questions? Okay, the first thing that's coming into my mind is this can actually sound like a big downer. Yeah. <laughs> so, for the li- your listeners, but even for me, yep. like going forward with you, learning from you now, this sounds like, oh man, that's a big drag. But you're talking about the spiritual battle of it. And I'm not sure if you're going to talk about this or can, is how we can fight this. Well, I think we should, you know, you know like, <laughs> we should talk about that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, not to like, so far listening, this is also interesting, but it can sound like, oh, kind of defeated, like almost like I have this in me. Right. But it doesn't have to stop there. Like we can go to battle with this yep, in can. us yep. to become holy people and def- like kind of try to defeat that. Yep. So, so basically, as it says that we're summoned to spiritual battle, right? So, and as I said in my own summary of what concupiscence is, this is in many ways the battle of the Christian life. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes, there are external temptations, Mm -hmm. but, and this is not true. Okay, so the reality, I I know that, um, okay, (laughs) there's a thousand different directions I want to go right now. (laughs) This is a deep topic. Um. Some of us, especially those of us who are new to Christianity, um, still uh, our, our circle of relationships, our friendships, are maybe with people who aren't walking the Christian walk. Mm-hmm. Um, others of us live in what sometimes is called a Catholic or Christian bubble, right? Yeah. So, like for me, for instance, having walked this walk, married a woman who has been walking this walk, working for the church. Mm-hmm. Um, do I know and am friends with people who aren't Catholics? Of course. Mm-hmm. People who aren't Christians? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But my closest friendships uh, are definitely Catholics who are desiring to, to, to walk the walk. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so therefore, I'm not, I don't have to struggle with external temptations as much from other human beings mm-hmm. as some, as much as some people do, just because mm-hmm. the reality True. of where yeah. they're at in their life, like mm-hmm. they're being, so yeah. Uh, yeah. not long ago, um, I was at a, a, a Christian concert and the musician, evangelical Protestant, but he just, uh, just like three years ago had a massive conversion uh like like uh, uh, yeah he was into drugs and so on contemplating suicide and so, a massive conversion and early on he really struggled because uh he's trying to remain and just at the level of in his humanity sober mm-hmm. um from his addictions to uh drugs and alcohol and but all of his friends were not they did not have the conversion that he did yeah, so it was a real hard. struggle for yeah. him right um I don't have those external temptations. Mm-hmm. Do I experience external temptations from others, the demons? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, is that as easy to see? No. I mean, yeah. if somebody yeah. else, if you started tempting me, Robin, like pushing me to do something wrong, that's easy to recognize. Yeah. Yeah. When demons are tempting, it's a little bit harder. Right. But right. I, but I, I, so that I know that happens sometimes. I'm aware of the, when there's a demonic temptation that's that's I'm struggling with. But most of my struggle, just in this living in the Catholic bubble Mm -hmm. that i do where most of my friends are fellow believers most of my struggle is the internal struggle against my own concupiscence yeah against my own desires so i just thought of this so i was listening to something recently that just touched on concupiscence and they mentioned that there are three kind of things that we struggle with like so we there's the worldly temptations or um i don't want to say battles but um the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, world, yep. the flesh, and the devil. Yep. And 
how sometimes, you know, the world can be a little bit easier. Yep. I mean, we know what, like, okay, that's wrong. I should not do that. The devil can be a little bit, well, he is a lot sneakier yep. in like um, camouflaging what he's tempting us into. But that the flesh is the hardest yep. of the three yep. to kind of um, conquer and help weaken the areas that are you know tempting us and so i found that really interesting and that kind of goes along i think with what you're saying too that it's the flesh that and i think sometimes even what we struggle with flesh and the flesh side of it also can um i feel like for myself sometimes it's not as obvious of when we're drawn into more sinful things that uh, it's like oh man that is just something within me that i struggle with Mm -hmm. and you know we can be we can um gain an awareness of it Mm -hmm. um if we want, or sometimes it's brought to our attention, but I personally feel like it's just, it just lies a little bit under the radar, kind of. Right. If that right. makes any sense. But then that is like where it just really, though, is like at your core of, oh man, that is a sin or a vice that I really struggle with. And then it goes back to you talking about how we are, we're bent and kind of disordered, right? In that way. Um, and just lean towards maybe not making the best choice or decision. Yep. First, that's not our first instinct to go. Right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fight that off. We just kind of tend to lean into that. So, um, yeah, that just popped into my head. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. To all that. So, so going back to your question then about so the struggle, because that's so yeah, what I was describing uh, is exactly the, that sort of classical uh, the struggle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. So mm-hmm. the world would be yeah. maybe other human relationships that I have with other human mm-hmm. beings. Um, the devil the devil and the other demons who tempt us but then yeah the flesh my Mm -hmm. desire to sin so we can make some headway against the desire to sin by our own strength some Mm -hmm. headway uh so the this is the idea of of human virtues Mm -hmm. um and the idea of human virtue is biblical but it's also was recognized outside of the context of Mm judeo-christianity during aristotle and ancient Mm -hmm. greek philosophers uh and and many other thinkers down to our own time recognize whether they use the word virtue or not Mm -hmm. they recognize the thing that I'm oftentimes tempted, or they wouldn't necessarily use the word tempted, mm-hmm. but uh, I have a desire to do things that just are not good for me. Yeah. And we can grow in virtue. We can gr- mm-hmm. strengthen our ability to do the good and avoid the evil. Yes. However, um, we are not left to our own devices because left to our own devices, uh, we can make some headway in some areas, uh, but God doesn't want us just, so he's a loving father, right? Yes. He doesn't want us just to make some headway in some areas. Mm-hmm. He wants us to be perfect as he's perfect. Yes. So as a good, good father, he gives us what we need mm-hmm. to make headway potentially and eventually in every area. Yeah. He desires that we really be holy, um, perfected. Uh, this mm-hmm. and this is the Christian battle to grow in holiness, to grow, grow towards perfection, where I do, where I do with ease and mastery, the things that I should do. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. we we know, as I said at the open, I know um, for me now with the the for me growing up Catholic and my study, I know what's sinful and and what's mm-hmm. not sinful. Um, th- th- it's not a matter of my ignorance. I am. Mm-hmm. I am aware. Mm-hmm. The problem is my in my weakness and brokenness. I still do the things that I know yeah. I shouldn't do. But God, mm-hmm. but so I can I can I can exercise my will, and God gives me grace, um, mm-hmm. sanctif- san- sacramental sanctifying grace, and actual grace mm-hmm. to help me overcome um, the evil that I do not want to do. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And I'm so glad you said that because he does. He gives us all the grace and love and everything necessary. So he knows exactly what we are fighting, what we individually deal with and fight and what's hard for us. And he gives us or makes available to us every grace and gift needed yep. to fight yep. that specific thing that we personally deal with. Right. So in his love for us, he he has personalized for each of us exactly what we need. Yep. to help fight that and that is what a good loving father would do so it is so beautiful Amen. and how blessed are we but he didn't just say oh you know this your the sin is part of you whatever he says you know but i'm giving you and providing for you everything that you need to so, get past that or to get through life dealing with that so amen yeah. 
So I'm going to ask you a question that that I have wondered before uh, in my own battles that I know others wondered before. Uh, I'm just curious what your take on it is. Are you my ready? take on your your an, your answer to the question I'm about to ask and ask you a Yikes. question. But why? <laughs> <laughs> no, not and not so what either. Um, Okay, so he, he the church the church definitively teaches what you just said. God gives us every grace we need to overcome, well, to avoid sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? This is kind of like the why. Is it? <laughs> really? What? Have you never asked him to take, so if there's like some vice, have you never asked God to just take it away? And he doesn't. I guess, yeah. There have been vices yeah. in, in the course of my walk. That yeah. Lord, I am sick and tired of this desire. Yeah, this, take it from this, me. Take Just remove it from, it from my life Just so I don't it. have to figure out fighting it off all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And he doesn't. He gives me the grace. To, he gives me the grace to avoid the sin, mm-hmm. but the desire. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he just take it away? Whether that was at my baptism, okay, fine. So he wants best. Why well, I'm asking for him to, yeah. Lord, why didn't you just take this away now? What, what what would be your answer to that question? Well, my answer, and I don't know if this is right, but my take on it would be that that sanctifies us. That I don't know, like when we learn to work through things that are causing us trouble in our life personally that yep. we personally deal with, if we can um, cooperate with god he is like refining us through it and sanctifying us and we're becoming more holy um i don't know that would be my take it's not fun it's not easy at all but i'm gonna push it a little further oh gosh i want to be but i I, yeah i do want him to refine me i i want him to make me holy so why does he just do it Perfect me now, Lord. Mm. I want to be perfect. I don't want to have these sinful inclinations and desires. I want them gone. I recognize mm-hmm. that you give me the grace to avoid it, but why don't you even just take take the desire and the inclination from me? I don't know. You answer. <laughs> I, I Was th- this in your dissertation? Uh, <laughs> no, this is in the dissertation, which is my life and my walk. Like, <laughs> Lord! You, t- uh, you say. I, I, for me, for me. And I think this is true for many of us. I don't know if I can say it's true for all of us, though. Uh, it's a matter of pride. Oh, interesting. If he took away... Okay, so it, it, if he gave me not only the, the grace to avoid sinning, which he does, but if he just took away the desire to sin completely, um, I think I, I'm pretty hot stuff, huh. so to speak, spiritually speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I could forget very easily that the um, absence of the sinful desire is because of a grace that he gave me mm. uh, and think it's just because I'm pretty hot mm. spiritual stuff. Wow. So for me, it's, it's because of pride. Mm. So um, the, by, for, for the, it, it's better overall for me. Again, I want to be clear here. He gives me the grace to avoid sin. I just... Don't always take it. Don't always accept it. Don't always accept yeah. it. I don't cooperate with mm-hmm. that grace, as you said. Um, so he wants me to get to a place where I'm always cooperating mm-hmm. with him. If he just took away the desire to sin, would I? Would I turn to him? Yeah. Huh. Uh, or That's a good, good or, thing or to think would about, I? Isn't it? Would I fall back towards the the original something like the original sin yeah. that Adam and Adam and Eve committed? So wow. I think that's. Yeah, the, the, it's a lifelong battle, but we can grow in it. So God has, through my cooperation with him, but he has given me the graces necessary, and I've cooperated with him such that over time I am being refined. I am being purified. Uh, I uh, It's hard to say I'm growing in holiness, but I am in small ways, mm-hmm. in so far as th- things, desires that I used to have, I don't have anymore. Mm-hmm. But but there are other areas where it's, I still have a, I do still have a long way to go, and that's mm-hmm. again the spiritual battle that, as the Catechism says, we are all summoned to. Yeah. So, Robin, we've got about three minutes left. Any other final questions or thoughts that you have uh, from your own experience walking the Christian walk, doing battle against concupiscence? No, I mean I could, but I just want to learn more about you, like I or about your like because you know so much about this topic and 
like on your like work side too. Yeah. So, so tell us what you can in the last few minutes, <laughs> please. <laughs> so, all right. So, so concretely, specifically, what do we do? And this just comes back to, and this is this is really good for something in Lent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is a little bit tangential, but I'll, I'll connect it pretty quickly before the end of the show for sure. Um, during Lent, we're invited to take on penances, mm-hmm. right? To give up, not we should give up sin, <laughs> but the, the classic thing I just think we're especially when we well for for Lent, I'm going to give up doing the sin. Yeah. Well, we should just always give. But yeah. in Lent, we're called to give up good things. Why? Because that helps us fight against concupiscence. Mm-hmm. So for me. Yeah. For me, uh, one area that where, where concupiscence is real in me is the, the, the is the tendency towards gluttony, to overeat or to eat the wrong kinds of things. Um, so, to practice, in my case, fasting, it's not saying that food's bad. It's not mm-hmm. sinful to eat, mm-hmm. but because I am disordered when it comes to my literal appetite for food, uh, I choose to. And then God's grace is so necessary for me in this. I choose to abstain from food uh, at certain times or certain kinds of foods, Mm -hmm. especially during the season of Lent, Mm -hmm. because that's me trying to properly order myself Mm -hmm. to get back to that original justice, that original righteousness, at least when it comes to my physical appetite, Mm -hmm. if nothing else. So things like... um, um, taking on penances are about mm-hmm. properly ordering my appetites, my desires. Concupiscence is is uh, disordered desire, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So prayer, fasting, almsgiving, three Lenten practices are three great ways to grow in original holiness, to, to mm-hmm. cast out, if you will, to purify ourselves by God's grace and our cooperation mm-hmm. of, of concupiscence. But also... Um, availing ourselves of the sacraments. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. My personal prayer, but also the liturgical prayer of God's church and, 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 and running to the sacraments as mm-hmm. much as I can. Because again, I, I, and I've come to become aware of, I cannot do this by myself. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think I can, but I can't. I can do, again, I can grow a little bit in some areas, but I can't make the progress that I want to by myself. I need him and his grace, him. and thanks be to God, he does give it to me. Amen. Amen? An abundance of it. An abundance. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. Folks, that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email us, ignition at sfcatholic.org, with any questions that you have or ideas for future episodes. Until next time. May God bless you.